Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chat, and if you're a regular on my channel, you'll know that I'm a pretty big fan of Dell's XPS lineup. And it turns out Dell also watches my videos and actually got in touch and asked if I wanted to make a video all about comparing the XPS 13 with the 15 with the 17. I was going to do it anyway, I just didn't get around to it, uh, but they very kindly sent out the 17 to complete this uh, comparison, although I actually bought these two myself. And the best bit, and the reason I bought this one myself, because it just arrived a couple of days ago, uh, is this is the brand new 11th gen Intel version of the XPS 13, which means we also have the brand new Intel XE graphics in here. And if you are interested in buying any of these, Black Friday is Dell's biggest sale of the year. You can save hundreds of pounds on their XPS laptops and loads of other tech. So I definitely recommend checking out their Black Friday sale and I'll leave all the links in the description below. So if I put the 17 and the 15 to one side for just a moment, let's start with a quick overview of the XPS 13. And as a little bonus, uh, here's one I made earlier. This is actually the current slash outgoing model. This is the 10th gen uh, version. But this is primarily a spec bump uh, with Intel's new Tiger Lake i5 and i7 processors. Uh, they're still 15 watt U-series chips, so I don't think the CPU difference is going to be that much. But as I say, importantly, we do have uh, Intel's new much faster integrated XE graphics. If you're like, no idea what that means, I'll tell you and show you in a minute. Uh, we also get faster RAM and also Thunderbolt 4 support, which to be fair is a pretty trivial update over Thunderbolt 3. Of course, there's still no option for a discrete graphics card in this guy, because uh, it's all about ultra portability. It weighs just, I think, 1.23 kilograms. So it's super lightweight, really nice and thin, the perfect kind of travel companion. So that's a quick look at the 13, but if we then move over to the 15, which for years now has been my go-to laptop, I've always kind of like, jump between this and the MacBook Pro 15, or more recently the 16, but I really do have a soft spot for the 15 here. And of course, we're getting a bigger screen uh, over the 13, obviously, uh, and also more powerful 45 watt each series processors compared to 15 watt U-series. i5, i7, and even an i9 option on here, up to eight core, 16 threads, and most importantly, an option for a GTX 1650 Ti graphics card. So this has a lot more graphical grunt than the 13, but it's still pretty portable. And even with the bigger battery option we've got, it still weighs just two kilograms, which is about four and a half pounds. And it's just 18 millimeters thick. But the extra power, uh, the bigger screen size really makes it an ideal choice for video editing, bit of gaming and just more demanding tasks than you might want to consider with a 13. This is kind of like, I know it's a cliche, but the best all rounder laptop. However, as much as I've always liked the 15, this year uh, we've had the introduction of the 17. They've brought this back. There hasn't been an XPS 17, I think in like seven or eight years or something like that uh, before now. And it has kind of overshadowed the 15 a little bit in my opinion. So the 17 doesn't actually feel a whole lot bigger than the 15, although it is noticeably heavier. Uh, we get a bigger battery, of course. It's a 97 watt hour battery, two and a half kilograms versus two kilograms. So, you know, still pretty portable for a 17 inch performance laptop, but you will notice the difference putting them in your backpack. So we're getting the same choice of processors in here as the 15 inch, uh, but more importantly, we have the option of a much more powerful RTX 2060 Max-Q over the GTX 1650 Ti, which makes for a much more capable gaming laptop, uh, not least that humongous screen is just really immersive and uh, beautiful to play on. Although of course, if you are gaming, you'll want to drop to 1080p. But this also has a much beefier cooling solution, uh, which helps keep everything cool and also the fans noticeably quieter than the 15. And really, you can probably think of the XPS 17 as a fancy premium slim and light proper desktop replacement. And of course, also having an RTX card means you get some NVIDIA extra bells and whistles like ray tracing and more importantly, DLSS support in games. And with this, you're also getting NVIDIA's latest NVENC encoder, which basically just comes in handy if you're doing lots of streaming or uh, video editing. It just makes your exports faster in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. So let's talk about design. And the XPS line is pretty refined these days. And while they're maybe not the most exciting laptops to look at, they do feel premium. And I like the understated look. They all get the same aluminium finish with black carbon fiber trackpad, which has an almost soft touch, silky feel to it. Although fingerprints are still a bit of a daily hazard. The 13 does have an option for white, sorry, Alpine white, which looks great, but I kind of prefer just his regular style. So you can see a very similar design language between the three. There's some obviously difference in sizes. Uh, we have the speakers outside the keyboard on the 15 and the 17, bigger trackpads, some differences in ports. Uh, but one thing that's worth noting 
And actually, the benefit of me having this older XPS 13 here is you can see the difference between the 4K and the Full HD models, because aside from the difference in resolution, of course, 4K is a lot sharper, uh, but also more demanding in programs and games, and also, of course, a big battery drain, which we'll come on to. Uh, but there is a slight difference in design between the two. This new 11th gen XPS 13 has a Full HD Plus screen, uh, but you can see it has this plastic bezel around the edge, which does protrude slightly from the screen, whereas on all 4K models, you just have this glossy, a flush bezel, which just looks a little bit more premium. And also you'll notice as I turn it towards my light, uh, the Full HD version is matte, uh, whereas the 4K is glossy. So you may have a preference between those two. They each have their benefits, but in terms of a pure sort of design aesthetic, the 4K model does look a little bit nicer. In terms of the trackpad, while the 13 inch gets a decent sized precision trackpad, the ones on the 15 and the 17 are just massive. Personally, I do still prefer the trackpads on MacBooks or even Microsoft's own Surface laptops, but these are all still really smooth and responsive. But as you can see, the keyboard on the 13 makes the most of the space and goes right to the edge of the laptop, while we have room for some beefier speaker grills outside the keyboard on the other two. And actually, speaking of the speakers, uh, both the 15 and the 17 here actually have the same 8 watt speakers, uh, whereas the 13 makes do with some lower power 2.5 watt speakers. So if you want the best audio experience, if you can watch a bunch of movies, then these are probably better options. And I think the 17 sounds just a little bit richer, a little bit bassier from the 17, although there's not a huge difference between these two. The 13 is fine, but at higher volumes, it does start to distort a little bit, and it doesn't have, of course, that same bass or richness as these two have. Now, in terms of connectivity, of course, they all have headphone jacks, which is great. Uh, the 13 inch gets two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports, along with a micro SD card reader. The XPS 15 gets three Thunderbolt 3 ports, uh, that's a bit of a tongue twister, along with a full-size SD card, which is a little bit more useful to me. And finally, on the big guy, the XPS 17, we get, how many? Four Thunderbolt 3 ports and a uh, full-size card reader as well. So just one more Thunderbolt 3 on that versus this. So of course, if you do want the older USB-A uh, type port or even like an HDMI, then you will, of course, have to use an adapter. Now, I think it's fair to say that Dell doesn't really do a bad screen on the XPS lineup and each model gets either a Full HD Plus panel with a matte anti-glare coating, although it does still support Dolby Vision HDR, or a 4K Plus glossy touchscreen display, uh, which I've got on these two, which is a lot more color accurate and aimed at more professionals for graphics or video work. And I also really like that we have 16 by 10 screens on all of them, uh, which means compared to your traditional 16 by nine, you just have a little bit more room at the top and bottom. So it doesn't feel quite as claustrophobic to use. I'm trying to avoid the term screen real estate, but you get more room. And I think that's particularly noticeable on the 13 inch. Now, as for the question of Full HD versus 4K, well, there's a few things to think about, uh, but to sum up, I would probably suggest Full HD on the 13, just because you're not gonna really feel the full effect of that higher resolution, that extra sharpness on a screen this size. And of course it does have a big impact on the battery. And I think on the 13 inch model, portability, longer battery is more important. But on the 15 and the 17, I would probably recommend the 4K. Now, speaking of battery life, let's uh, bring back the older XPS 13. Again, this is coming in handy uh, for comparative purposes. And while of course these aren't exactly the same spec for spec, uh, this is 10th gen, this is 11th gen, but they're both U series 15 watt chips. The biggest difference between the two when it comes to battery life is the fact that this is 4K and this is Full HD. And so in my battery test, the Full HD Plus 11th gen XPS 13 here managed around nine hours of full screen YouTube at 50% brightness, while the 4K managed just over five hours. That's a pretty big difference. And in the same test, the XPS 15 lasted six and a half hours, whereas the 17 managed a smidge under eight hours. But as I say, if you want longevity away from the plug, which I think is probably more of a priority on the smaller travel size XPS 13, uh, then I will go with the Full HD Plus on here. Unless of course you are a photographer or an editor or designer and you do need you know, the more professional colors and the extra sharpness comes in handy, the 4K is nicer. Uh, but yeah, as I say, I'd go Full HD, 4K, 4K. Okay, last question, what about performance? Well, in my quick gaming test, the RTX 2060 in the XPS 17 is unsurprisingly way out in front. To be fair, it is asking a lot to test all these three with a brand new AAA game like Watch Dogs Legion, but I thought it would be interesting. And at Full HD Plus and ambitiously high settings, I averaged 62 FPS on the XPS 17, 
39 FPS on the XPS 15 and a not really playable 17 FPS on the XPS 13. Although I did get over 30 FPS by knocking settings down to low, which to be fair isn't that bad at all coming from integrated graphics. But I think a game like Rainbow Six Siege is much better suited to these kind of laptops. And at 1080p with high settings, we're getting 183 FPS on the 17, 129 on the 15, and about 70 on the 13. Which considering on the previous XPS 13 we're getting just 29 FPS, Intel's XE graphics really are a big step up. But what about video editing? Well, exporting a 10 minute 4K Premiere Pro video was, as you'd expect, the fastest on the XPS 17, but the 15 was only a minute slower and closer than I was expecting. Of course, both are a lot faster than the 13, which took nearly twice as long. So there you have it, and genuinely, these are probably my favorite Windows laptops. Yes, they aren't cheap by any stretch, but these are premium machines, I think are decent value when compared to the other high-end competition from uh, Apple and Microsoft. So obviously this is a brand new laptop. These are all the latest, but this has just come out. Uh, the launch times are a little bit different between the three, uh, but I wouldn't expect a next gen version of these probably until April, 2021. What I would really like to see actually is a AMD Ryzen powered XPS. Uh, hopefully Dell is aware of that and maybe they can do something with the new ones. But thank you so much for watching guys. I really do hope you found this video useful and I will put links to all three in the description below along with uh, Black Friday deals because I suspect we'll get some good discounts on these. Uh, so hopefully that will come in handy. And yeah, if you want to see more from me, if you're not sick of my face or my voice just yet, then hit that little subscribe button down below uh, and I'll see you guys next time right here on the Tech Chat.